Good morning and half a day. The Committee on General Government Operation, Appropriation, and Housing are now called to order. For the record, today is Tuesday, June 15, and the time now is 9.08. I apologize for, being, for running late. Note for this budget hearing was disseminated via email to all senators and all main media outlets. Public notice was issued on June 7th, followed by June 10th. And the committee will hear and accept testimonies on Bill 55-36-COR, the Fiscal Year 2022 Appropriation Act as requested by the Governor, relative to the Guam Regional Transit Authority Fiscal Year 2022 budget request. I'd like to acknowledge my colleagues that have joined me this morning. I have uh, Senator Amanda Shelton, my Vice Chair, and Senator uh, Mary Torres. Uh, general rules for this public hearing, those testifying on behalf of Bill 55-36, CR route to the Guam Regional Transit, is uh, self, Mr. Salvatore, the Director, and Jennifer Cruz. Written testimony shall be submitted to the committee. Please provide the legislative staff with written testimony for photocopy. Testimony may be read, and lengthy testimony should be summarized to about five minutes. But Mr. Bata, you have all the time and all this morning, if, need, if needed. Those testifying be allowed to present oral testimony. Once you're done, please remain in the room for questions or for additional testimony that may be desired by members of the committee. Questions and testimony shall be confined to, this, to the nature of this agenda, which is the budget of Guam Transit, Guam Regional Transit Authority. Personal inference as to the character or the motive of any senator or any individual testifying is not permitted. Any violation of the general rule of conduct will result in removal from the budget hearing by, will be removed from the budget hearing. By performing the quorum shall be practiced by all present in the public hearing room for this proceedings. Individuals who fail to maintain proper form the quorum may be restricted from providing oral testimony and will be removed from the room. When you speak, please make sure that the Microphone is on and that you speak into the microphone. Um, you state your name and your title for the record. Um, I'd like to also recognize that uh, Senator uh, Peter Terlai, the Oversight Chair of, Guam, of the Guam Transit Authority, Regional Transit Authority, is here. And at this time, I ask the panel members, Mr. Babata and Ms. Cruz, to please rise so that you would be sworn in by the certain arms. Can you raise your right hand? Under penalty of perjury, you will affirm that any and all information that you provide today, whether it be verbally, electronically, or in writing, be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Mr. Mr. Chair, they're all under oath. You may proceed. Thank you, Zarn Arms. I now ask Mr. Balta, please uh, present your budget, give your opening statement, and please continue to testify in reference to your budget. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and Senators. Hafadai, Chairman St. Augustine, and honorable members of the 36th Guam Legislature. My name is Celestine Cruz Bebauta, Executive Manager of the Guam Regional Transit Authority. On behalf of the GRTA Board of Directors and the men and women of the agency, I would like to express our sincere gratitude for allowing me the opportunity to present the GRTA's budget for FY 2022. The budget I present to this August body of gov Guam's government is what we believe will enable the GRTA to provide some improvements to Guam's transit system. The governor and the finance team afforded me a $2.6 million budget. And I'm thankful despite the pandemic challenges we continue to face. Almost three years ago, this administration assumed control of GRTA. Although GRTA was created in March 2011 with Public Law 30-5, it is full of challenges. What are some of those challenges? GRTA is still in a temporary facility. More buses are needed to provide responsive, reliable, and safe transit system. Technology is needed to effectively lead and manage the island's transit operations. Paratransit riders were being denied transportation to their medical appointments. Fixed route riders were not being picked up on time. Transportation for the homeless and veterans was non-existent. 
Much more funding is needed to reduce congestion, lessen pollution, upgrade the island's transit system with the state-of-the-art transit resources, and much more. We are now in June 2022, and I'm privileged to report that GRTA has taken such challenges head-on. The architectural and engineering design of its facility that will house maintenance, operations, and administration under a single roof is 30% complete. Ten American with Disabilities Act compliant buses are scheduled for delivery in October-November 2021 timeframe. That will provide more capacity and help transport those for looking for jobs, medical appointments, school, etc. We submitted bus procurement package to GSA last month for another six ADA compliant buses with an estimated delivery date of approximately February 2022. GRTA has transformed its transit operations from manual to technology. Dispatchers are able to track the location of buses, whether they are running on time, the number of riders on the bus, who is on the bus, and to collect data that we need for uh, reporting and decision making. Paratransit riders are not being denied transportation to their medical appointments. The homeless and veterans for the first time are being provided with transportation to their appointments to find jobs and bring them to their work sites. This is really under the leadership of Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio. Awarded, GRTA was awarded $11 million in competitive grants through competition with other transit agencies throughout the United States. The funds will be used to purchase electric buses, electric cars, build charging stations, procure technology transportation management system, design and build information and convenience center. We will also be using, we will also be building a park and ride facility in the village of Dedadu to help reduce traffic congestion. We will be conducting a feasibility study. As a matter of fact, we've already started working with the University of Guam and route matched by Uber to determine if mobility on demand transit operations is viable for the people of Guam and its visitors. Chairman St. Augustine and Senators, despite all of what's in the works, Team, GR Team GRTA is focused in completing what it, what it has planned to accomplish. However, with everything else, funding is essential and other resources are needed. Furthermore, all of what we are doing at GRTA is crucial because of at least the following respects. GRTA is providing the most vulnerable people of Guam with much needed transportation to the disabled vet individuals, to the homeless, to the veterans, students, riders who are looking for jobs but without transportation. Transportation is a vital factor in growing Guam's economy. GRTA is contributing significantly in making Guam more sustainable with clean and, envir and healthy environment. Chairman St. Augustine and Senators of the 36th Guam Legislature, for granting me an opportunity to convey the needs of GRTA. Without legislative support, it will be extremely challenging for GRTA to accomplish its mission. Respectfully, Celestine Selbabauta, Executive Manager of the Guam Regional Transit Authority. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bauta. Um, we have a, I have a few questions I'd like to pose to you. Um, and I know, I, if I'm correct, I think you provided everybody a copy of the answers. Um, are there any prior year outstanding personnel service obligations? Yes, sir, um, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we do have, uh, or we are going to have uh, prior year obligations, and they include inc increments, overtime, vehicle maintenance, utilities and one payroll uh, hazardous pay for our uh, um, essential workers. And, and the reason are as follows. For overtime, overtime hours were attributed to the additional work requirements mandated by the pandemic precautionary measures and measures that also uh, were mandated by the Federal Transit Administration. 
transforming GRTAs uh, also. Uh, overtime is needed in our uh, training and preparation to implement technology into our transit uh, operations. We are also uh, uh, encountering shortage of bus drivers and dispatchers and schedulers. And uh, in addition, we're also transporting, uh, you know, homeless and veterans. So for these reasons, we uh, have encountered uh, overtime um, um, requirements. And, and you know, with uh, the pandemic, what we weren't doing before, uh, for example, we weren't sanitizing buses, and now we're sanitizing buses and the bus shelters. We uh, are checking the temperature of uh, riders as they um, enter the bus, and we provide them with a uh, face mask if they don't have any face mask. Uh, we're, um, uh, and that's on every shift, uh, Mr. Chairman and Senators. So, you know, with all of the additional requirements that we've been mandated with respect to the pandemic and, and the other uh, reasons, um, we uh, uh, have a, a shortage in funds for overtime. Additionally, we need, uh, we have prior, we're going to have prior year obligations for maintenance uh, for at least the, the following reasons. One, uh, our buses and vans that are uh, going to be repaired or maintained, uh, they are in the shop or will be turned into the shop up until the end of the fiscal year. So with that, we uh, are going to have a prior year obligation for uh, maintenance. For um, utilities, we weren't paying utilities in the past, Mr. Chairman and Senators. Now we are forced to pay utilities. And uh, of course, with payroll, uh, to pay hazardous during one uh, uh, payroll period. I think uh, Governor Guam was told to not pay hazardous pay. And as a result of that, during one, that one pay period, we uh, didn't pay our, our essential workers with what they are due. So, so those, uh, Mr. Chairman and Senators, are um, what we need with respect to prior year outstanding um, obligations. All right, Mr. Bunther, you are aware that in the budget you are authorized to spend within your budget if you have additional funding, correct? Uh, yes, sir, I am. Okay, so, um, you know, you've already answered um, the status of your capital outlay, your 30% design complete. Um, have you? Have you procured all majority of your budget supplies and equipment for the year? Yes, sir. We've uh, been diligent in this regard, and um, we've uh, uh, procured uh, all of those essential items that we need. Okay. Um, has the budget expenditure plan been prepared for federal assistance funds that the department has been allocated, and how much have you been allocated, if anything at all? Sir, um, we are working with the governor and the finance team with regards to GRTA's proposals in this regard. And currently, uh, they are being reviewed and considered. So, um, but we do have, uh, uh, so we do, uh, we did have submitted our proposals. All right, are, are you aware that the uh, Guam legislature, this body has requested that you would receive $6 million from the American Rescue Plan? to assist in increasing capacity for passengers with the purchase of new buses, vans, including vehicle fleet maintenance and repairs, and address operational needs. Are you aware of that? Yes, sir. I uh, received a copy of the resolution from the speaker, okay. and uh, I want you to know and all the senators that I'm thankful for that. Uh, I can tell you that with everything that we are um, doing, and with respect to Public Law 30-5, that GRTA can uh, transform itself into an <laughs> autonomous agency. Um, you know, we're, we're look, and, and in addition to that, we need more buses. Uh, so with, uh, with um, you know, the, the six million that um, was identified on that resolution, uh, definitely um, I can assure you that GRTA is going to make the best out of those funds. All right, Mr. Bautha, so that if you're fortunate enough to get the six million, I believe that uh, based on your budget request and uh, our discussion earlier, 
you would actually have more than you would have sufficient funds to cover all your obligations and all your anticipated probably one year or two year uh, budget requirements. Am I correct? That's six million dollars. That's that's twice the amount than what you get. Yeah. Correct. Yes, sir. I, I again, I'm appreciative for that. Um, on the other hand, sir, uh, and senators, um, I have to admit, and with all due respect, uh, transit needs a lot of help. And uh, uh, you know, with all that we've done, I think we've uh, demonstrated to the people of Guam that you know uh, we made some uh, we made some dents to improving Guam Guam's transit system. But there's um, a lot of work that still lies ahead, you know? And um, we have a lot of people who are looking for jobs, but without transportation. We're growing Guam's economy. Uh, traffic is so congested on many of our highways. Gas prices continue to go up. Uh, and, and, you know, there's a big need for us to begin looking at electrification electrification of our um, vehicles. And you know, with all of those, um, I, I just want to let uh, you, sir, along with the other senators that uh, were focused on addressing these issues. But uh, as I stated on my testimony, um, we need funding and uh, certainly uh, we need uh, resources. But again, I just want you to know that I'm thankful for the $6 million. All right, thank you, Mr. Balta. You're also aware that the Guam Highway funds are not tracking. Yes, sir. And we'll do what we can to assist you in what, what you need to achieve to take care of the people of Guam. I'd like to also recognize Senator Duenas that has joined us this morning. And I'd ask uh, the Oversight Chair, uh, Senator Pito, if he uh, has any questions for you. Shell, thank you very much. And I want to thank also your secretary, your assistant there for showing uh, up this morning. You know, Shaw, I, I want to congratulate you because all the things that you have mentioned in your breakdown have answered my questions. The only thing that I wanted to raise right now is, you know, we had, ma uh, we had made plans that you're, you're gonna uh, just do your own purchasing yes, sir. because of the timeline that is required sometimes for these federal funds. Uh, do you know what is the status on that right now? Um, sir, uh, of course, uh, I've, I've spoken to some of the senators and are very supportive. But the challenge that we have right now is that um, I don't have anyone in my staff who has completed all of the four volumes of uh, the procurement uh, processes, you know, that uh, or uh, training that are being offered at the Guam uh, Community College. So once we um, certainly, uh, once we hire a person with that uh, abilities, um, we're going to uh, hopefully uh, come back and also convey to the governor that it's, it's very, very important for us to take over at least um, the procurement of anything um, within our means, you know. Uh, sir, I'll tell you, um, Transit <laughs> GRTA is a, a very dynamic agency, I can assure you that. And uh, my team and I have been diligent um, in, in doing what we can to make things better. And one of our big challenges is really uh, with the uh, uh, General Services Administration. And for what reasons, I don't know. Maybe they're short of manpower or whatever, but uh, um, that's something that hopefully uh, one day we'll be able to take over and uh, ensure that when we need to do, do RFPs, when we need to procure, um, you know, other essential uh, resources, that we're going to be able to, uh, to uh, get those things accomplished in, you know, minimal time versus um, a longer period of time. Michelle, have you done a, uh, an announcement for that position so that you can get that person uh, within your organization? Or have you planned to really do an OJ, send somebody to GSA to do an OJT with them? Uh, 
I have I have some people who have worked at GSA, sir. But you know, while they were there, they didn't have an opportunity to attend those training sessions over at Guam Community College. Whether we've done any advertising, we haven't done any advertising for procurement person because we don't have anybody in our staffing pattern. But um, again, um, as we move forward to become an autonomous agency, uh, and also part of what I've included in my proposal under the American Rescue Plan is to uh, look at uh, hiring a um, procurement administrator. So okay. when I have the funds, uh, certainly that's one of the key positions that I plan to hire, sir. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to talk about budget because we discussed that, uh, we discussed that uh, last week. And I guess the, the chairperson for budget is, uh, is you know, uh, have come to... Uh, to an agreement on what he needs to do with your agency and as far as getting the money that you need. And I'm pretty sure the Senator uh, Joseph Augustine is in full force to make sure that uh, your, your accommodation is, is satisfied. Another thing that I just wanted to bring up, I'm not going to talk about budget because we, we discussed this last week and I, your breakdown here explained everything. Uh, what about the uh, the location, the new new location, new location that we're talking about uh, for the uh, uh, for the uh, bus and ride or something? The park and ride. Uh, yeah, park uh, and ride. Are, are we in agreement that we're gonna use the other one that's being recommended because maybe the. Uh, the Dedidu uh, Municipal Planning Council is not in agreement with the one that originally uh, we, we have uh, identified? Um, Chairman Terlahi, um, you know, after we met uh, during that oversight hearing, um, the mayor of Dedidu uh, asked for us to meet. So I, the mayor, her uh, vice, the vice mayor, and the MPC council members, along with uh, Director Borja, we met up at uh, the Dededu De 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 Mayor's office, and uh, we talked, we discussed about other alternatives. Uh, so then they identified the buffer between Route 1 and, uh, you know, ERC. And, uh, you know, we believe that, and I briefed the board members in this regard, and we believe that, uh, you know, that buffer is, uh, is uh, really um, a more uh, amenable location because it's right along Route 1. People from Jigu who are wanting to park their cars, um, they can drive in, park their car, get on the bus, and head on to their destination, you know. So that's a more uh, desirable location. On the other hand, the old flea market, uh, that's also uh, a... a uh, a spot that we can definitely use if it's available. And, and the reason I say that is because it's already paved. Uh, we don't need to do a whole lot of site preparation uh, on that. So, you know, those two locations are really um, what we're hoping to, to get, whatever we can. But, you know, in our uh, uh, grant proposal, we included... Um, the old flea market on our grant proposal. Uh, but after um, conveying that message to the um, mayor, the mayor uh, met with her council members and apparently the decision was negated. And um, that's why we're in this situation now. But we're still um, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm making Director Bora uh, aware that the board, uh, along with the uh, Village of Dededu, the mayor, vice mayor, and the council members uh, are, you know, willing to take that pro or use that property, that the buffer zone. Yeah. And the only reason why I ask you, uh, Sal, because, you know, we have a timeline for that million, $9 million. And yes, uh, the director of, uh, uh, Director Bora needs to start working that because of the timeline. timeline and we don't meet those that timeline, we're going to lose that $9 million. Yes, yeah. So if you're in agreement with the second uh, parcel of property that, that we were talking about, 
then you know we need uh, we need to push uh, uh, director of uh, of uh, land management yes, uh, to uh, pres uh, expedite the uh, so we can because we need to initiate a bill for that one. So uh, once again, uh, that's that's all that I am interested in right now because you know the budget that you're you know your your breakdown here explain everything on on some of the circumstances that you face right now so i want to thank you and your staff uh for uh showing up this morning thank you thank good you. job thank you thank you senator july and uh, i'd like to also recognize that uh, my colleagues joined us uh, senator brown and senator frank bloss um Madam uh, Senator Amanda, do you have any questions or comments for the panel? Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and thank you, uh, Mr. Babauta, and to the GRTA team for being here this morning. Uh, and, of course, for all of the updates on your progress since you've uh, been in office at GRTA, Sidious Masi, for all of your work. Uh, there's so much to uh, acknowledge here and so much progress that has been made. So congratulations to you and your team. I wanted to follow up on a question I asked a couple of years ago about student fairs that uh, could possibly be in place uh, now that we're heading back to face-to-face -face school in uh, the University of Guam and the Guam Community College, go back to uh, in, in classroom learning. Uh, has there been any progress made on student fairs uh, as we have for the Manamku Raid and uh, other special fairs at uh, the... Uh, Guam Regional Transit Authority. Uh, Senator Selton, um, we have um, the fear for um, students and the Manamku and the persons with disabilities. 50 cents. Uh, uh, it's, it's 50 cents per ride, ma'am. Okay. And uh, I believe it's $1. fifty for, for the whole day. Uh, so uh, we are very mindful of the fact that um, you know, students, uh, persons with disabilities, uh, you know, there's a big need for them to get the support that they need to, to reach their, uh, their destination. As a matter of fact, um, you know, the, the $9.5 million that we competed for and was awarded, that's phase one of the road to education. And, and the essence of that is because, you know, Wijigu and Dededu, then you add um, Anderson Air Force Base, and then you add the soon-to-come Camp Ben Blas uh, Marine Corps Base. There are thousands of people at Dededu and Jigu who are students, uh, staff, faculty, workers um, who are needing transportation reliable transportation to Guam Community College, to George Washington High School, to the University of Guam, to Father Duenius Memorial High School. And, you know, at least two or three buses are going to be dedicated to bring those people up to the school every 15, 30 minutes to make sure that they're there on time for their classes. But, you know, um, we have to take care of the students. The students are the future of Guam. And um, we've got to make sure that they get their own time. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Mr. Babata. I appreciate uh, the, aware the awareness of the Transit Authority uh, to, to help our students, to help uh, individuals with disabilities mm. get where they need to go. So I appreciate that answer. Um, in the talking points of the budget, you uh, mentioned that uh, there is difficulty right now recruiting uh, drivers who are certified, who are high school uh, graduates. Uh, can you discuss some of the issues that you have? And I see that one of the, one of the solutions that you've presented is hiring uh, retired GovGuam bus drivers. But if you can just discuss some of the issues with recruitment that you're facing right now. Sure, and not only in Guam, but even uh, throughout the United States, there's always a big challenge for uh, bus drivers and uh, as you know uh, on my testimony we are uh, we've started a feasibility study with the University of Guam at Uber route match to um, 
determine uh, whether uh, mobility on demand, Uber Thai transit system, is viable for Guam. And, and you know, the funds that we're using for this study, $1.9 million is, is competitive grant money. We competed for this money. This is a, a special research and development money that the Federal Transit Administration awarded to only 25 transit agencies in the United States, and we got the second highest. So, you know, with that, we need 16 bus drivers, eight in the morning and eight in the afternoon. Plus, we need four more to back up in the event that some of those eight uh, have to go on leave or, or go on sick leave. Then we're moving right along with the park and ride. With the park and ride, we're going to be buying eight electric buses, eight electric cars. We're going to need 16 bus drivers per um, shift. AM is 16, PM another 16, so 32. So you add the 32 plus the 60, plus the 20, plus um, the paratransit and the fixed route uh, operations that we're doing. Uh, we're we're going to need at least 60 bus drivers in the next year, year and a half. And, and we've started communicating with the Department of Labor to do a boot camp with Guam Community College to begin to address uh, the bus driver needs. But, you know, um, in the meantime, uh, we have uh, our people out there who are looking for jobs with G and D license. And some of them don't have a high school diploma. But on the other hand, they've been certified and they have a good track record with regards to bus driving. So I think uh, it, it'd be very helpful for us to, um, to, to give those people an opportunity to drive for us, even if they don't have a high school diploma. I mean, you know, we, we, we hire them, they're out of the jobless uh, group of folks, they pay taxes, um, you know, they are less reliant on um, social programs, uh, you know, they go out and spend their paycheck at uh, different stores and markets. And, uh, you know, the, it, it's, it's a really um, a domino effect in terms of, you know, providing better transit system, providing better um, quality of life for these people. Thank you very much for that answer, uh, Mr. Babata. You said exactly what I was looking for, that you are starting a partnership between the Department of Labor and the Guam Community College for a boot camp. That is exactly what I was going to suggest here today because we've seen success for the truck drivers boot camp and the ship repair uh, boot camp, getting these individuals uh, straight into jobs after this training. So we know that it's a program that can work and hopefully work well for the department. I think there's also an opportunity uh, to partner with the Guam Community College uh, to get these individual individuals with G and D licenses without uh, a high school diploma, their uh, GED uh, through the adult high school program at the Guam Community College. So I hope that's something that you'll look at. And also, I'll also ask the question if there is a partnership uh, to be made there that we can help uh, these individuals along to get into these open positions right now. Right. Okay. The, the other thing, um, Senator Selton, that uh, I've approached um, the president, uh, a GCC president, uh, Mary Okada, is um, we need to start looking at developing a curriculum framework for uh, electric uh, maintenance people, electric uh, vehicle maintenance people, mm -hmm. uh, because that's forthcoming. Uh, it's not only GRTA, um, but apparently Senator Amanda um, Paris uh, had introduced legislation to, you know, begin introducing electric vehicles in Guam. And uh, that's a way for the future. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, um, I've already emailed um, President Okada to that perhaps maybe we can partner up and uh, start looking at a curriculum framework for electric vehicles uh, maintenance program. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Babata. You're I welcome. Think, uh, there, there's definitely opportunity here for uh, the different agencies within the government to support each other and help us all move forward together. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Shelton. Uh, Senator, Mer uh, Senator Mary Torres, do you have any questions or comments for the panel? Yes, thank you, Mr. Babalta, for your presentation and also for the, uh, the attachments that you gave us, including the um, talking points. It's quite clear from your 
budget submission that you are building a transit system, that Guam is now at the point where we are contemplating additional fleets, um, a whole management system that's electronic, maintenance, um, a park and ride facility, many things that, that have not been in existence uh, with Guam Transit. So we, we applaud you for your forward vision in terms of um, providing for essential transportation, especially for our most vulnerable, um, those that require ADA-compliant transportation, as well as those that just don't have the, the means to purchase vehicles and purchase insurance policies and, and purchase uh, the um, required gasoline. So we understand that the challenges of transportation are, are growing now with, um, with expenditures also rising. I wanted to, uh, you discussed also, you know, your need for additional drivers, uh, understanding that the new fleet is going to be coming in, the electric buses and, and ADA compliant vehicles are going to be arriving on Guam around October and November of this year, correct? That's correct, ma'am. Okay. And I just wanted to ask you, you discussed the importance of converting unclassified to now classified positions. It's, it's clear from your budget submission that your personnel has numbers for full-time employees will go down in fiscal year 2022 from 36 to 29 positions, but that um, the majority of those positions are, are recommended to be converted to classified. Can you just discuss uh, for us your rationale on why it is important at this time to consider converting those positions to classified and how Sen it works into your scheme? Senator Torres, uh, really, I, I greatly appreciate that question. And let me tell you why. Um, prior to this administration coming on board, there was a contract put out. Uh, and uh, with that contract, GRTA was spending um, about $2.4 million, and GRTA was providing buses, GRTA was paying for gas, GRTA was paying for maintenance, GRTA was paying for oil, GRTA was paying for tires. We have 29 full-time employees that we um, have proposed for FY22. And six, six of those are for bus drivers. And um, in addition to that, I'm respectfully asking for the 40 bus drivers, schedulers, and dispatchers, and maintenance, and our ombudsman person to become classified employees. And the reason is, with hi us hiring all of these people, the cost for payroll is $1.9 million. So we are saving the government of Guam funds in this regard. In addition to that, we um, take care of our resources much better than we were when we were um, contracting uh, bus operations. So let me tell you why. I show up at 4 o'clock in the morning at the contractor's location to find out how operations are being managed and led. And um, there's no supervision, you know, honesty. Now, when you show up at 4 o'clock in the morning to find out whether uh, we're ready and, uh, to, to handle our transit operations, my bus driver supervisor is there at 4 o'clock in the morning to make sure that the tablets for the buses are, are all charged up. He issued those out, make sure that the vehicles are ready, the drivers show up, and we're ready to roll. And that's one of the big reasons why we do not have uh, a whole lot of complaints of our transit operations. We provide good leadership. We provide, you know, we, prov we care about transit operations. Um, so, so with those reasons, ma'am, I'm asking the legislature to, to make our transit uh, people uh, who are limited term to be classified in order for us to make our transit system continue to be consistent, 
we need these people to be classified. Uh, you know, in, in, in the island of uh, Kauai, Senator Torres, uh, like Guam, all of their transit operations, their maintenance are being managed by the county of Kauai. And, and, and I see Guam in that regard because um, I have to admit, really with everything that I've experienced in the little over two years that I was leading and managing the Guam Regional Transit Authority, that um, there's no comparison between what we're doing and what were being done in the past. So for such reasons, again, I, I humbly ask this uh, body of government to support GRTA in making those uh, positions classified. What you're essentially arguing for is the creation of a new system of transit authority that is not only reliable, that, but that has the employees that are committed to their jobs, uh, perhaps as careers for them, right? I mean, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to wrap my head around where your vision is going um, and, and really what is the timeline for the permanency? Because if, if, you, can, if you can see the, the picture, right, where, where you're headed, what your end goal is, and the timeline for that, it's, it's, easy to, it's easier to support that mission. And I think that um, what I see has happened is you have taken on uh, the task of applying for a competitive grant. And we understand how competitive grants are exactly that. They're, they're, um, they're goals that are not easily achievable. And the fact that you were awarded an $11 million grant, competitive grant, suggests that your, um, your formula for setting up a, a mass transit system on Guam is reasonable, at least reasonable enough for the federal government to fund it at the level that they did. And you indicated you were the second highest uh, recipient of the grant, which is, is really a, a great deserves great accolades for your team and for Guam to do that. But I, I think mostly it, it demonstrates that there is a dire need to set up a transit system on Guam, given our growth potential, given the military buildup that's coming down, Camp Blas that's going to be nearing completion, um, and the population that will continue to grow in, in the most populated area of, of our island. But mostly, really, it, it's accessibility for our islands so that they can be um, economically feasible and sustainable. But are you confident, Mr. Babata, that, that you are on track for your, uh, your projects, getting the buses on, on board, being able to hire enough people, getting the routes in place, um, even understanding what your, your market is, your rider's market? Can you comment a little bit more on the rider's market and what you anticipate? Um, again, thank you for that question. You know, um, Senator Torres, it's, it's people like Jennifer Cruz. that make this agency uh, the way it is right now. We work hard. And you know, uh, this uh, mobility on demand uh, with Uber, Uber has 60 languages within its software. And um, you know, when, when tourists begin to uh, uh, come into Guam, the Koreans, the Chinese uh, from Taiwan, the um, Japanese, they'll be able to download the app, schedule their rights for us to pick them up at the airport. You know, so, so that's, we believe that with that mobility on demand, we're going to, to um, make a, a, a few dollars out of that. We are advertising on our buses right now. 
I think with more buses, we'd be able to advertise more on, our, uh, on, on those buses. Um, we are allowed by public law to franchise public transportation in Guam. Um, you know, we are allowed by public law to manage um, public parking in Guam. So, so with all of what we're doing and what we plan to accomplish, if I, re if I get the resources that I need, uh, there's, no, there's no doubt. Um, you know, I've, uh, <laughs> I've been in many career fields. I spent almost 21 years in the United States Air Force, active duty. And I was in leadership and management position in different uh, career fields, in telecommunications, in transportation, and, in, in, you know, um, uh, uh, mechanical systems. And uh, I'm really, I have a master's degree in workforce education and development. So with all of my experience, with all of my education, and the people that I, I work with, we're focused on making sure that what we set out to accomplish, you know, that we get those things done, and I'm confident. I mean, in, in less than three years, we've, we've done what we've, 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 we've done what I mentioned on my testimony. And it, it's, it's all about caring, it's about passion. It's about, you know, making sure that when we go home at night and we look at ourselves at the mirror, that, that we don't have any regrets in telling the taxpayers of Guam that we've done what we needed to do. So, you know, for those reasons, Senator Torres, um, I, I'm, I'm confident that we can make things happen, ma'am. You know, Mr. Babata, I, I greatly respect not only your, your vision, the work that you and your team have put so far, but also your humility you understand the great need, and you are trying to build up and provide that need in our community, for that need in our community. And I just also want to get a little personal here and share with you that I, I, I very much appreciate and support the Guam Region Transit Authority in their effort to stand up mass transit on Guam. Because at one point, also in my life, when I was a student with a young family, the bus system was what allowed me to go to the store, to go to work, to go to school, and to, to shuttle my children around. So it's, it's very, it's, it's a need that without that, you know, if you don't have the means to purchase a car, an insurance policy, um, pay for parking, you know, on the streets, in the, me in the meters, in the garage, transit, the mass transit system is, is really your only option. And I know that for me and my young family at the time when we were students and, and uh, new in our jobs, that was how we got around. And so it, it's, it's, I appreciate that you're humble enough to, to put your whole heart into this because that's what it's gonna take. And we can, we can pick through how we don't believe that it's gonna work, that you know Guam is not up for it, but I think the fact that you applied for a competitive grant and the federal government answered your application by awarding you $11 million suggests that you have a viable and reasonable plan. And, uh, and, and I would like to support your efforts and this administration in letting that go because it's, it's something that, as a person who relied on mass transit for many, many years in, in my young adult life, and even when I had little kids that I had to carry along with everything else, it's what worked, and it's what allowed us to get to school and get to work. And I, and I, I know that firsthand, so uh, yes, I, I concur with that. And, um, and, it, and what I see now, having employed uh, a person with disability, that was the only mode of transportation for that person with disability to get to the office and get back home. So. Um, it is real, and, it, and it's true, and we need to stand this up. And if, you're, if your vision is, is, is correct, and you've got everything lined up, including the support of the mayors, the feasibility studies you know, with the university, everyone to suggest that the plan, the ridership, and the plan and the equipment is in place, then um, I say let's give it a go, because this economy needs a, a good jump start, and people need to get back to their lives again. So. 
I just want to, you know, assure you that there are people here that are behind you. Thank you. And, uh, and you know, it's nice to see your heart to Mr. Babalta because sometimes it's that passion that drives not only uh, people to follow you, but, but people to support you. And, and to trust in the system, because it is, after all, going to be Guam's system. Mm -hmm. So, Susan Masi, and you know, keep it up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Torres. Senator Duenas, do you have any questions or comments for the panel? Susan Masi, Mr. Chairman, and Susan Masi, Loki, to you, um, Mr. Babauta, for being here today, and of course, uh, your assistant and um, your team that's supporting you. Um, I want to thank you for a very comprehensive um, report before us today and uh, also uh, outlining what you've accomplished and, and where you're going. I concur with my colleague, retiring speaker, in commending the authority for receiving uh, the grant funds. I, I guess my first question to you, Mr. Babata, because I just wanted to go into one area of the funding request, and this might support my fundamental question to you, is. Is your vision as outlined and your grant award, is it now, with all you've outlined here, uh, build it and they will come approach? Yes, sir. Um, uh, the um, facility that we're planning to build, that will have uh, uh, maintenance operations and administration under one roof, we were awarded, um, GRTA was awarded 237500 back in 2011. So now we're making use of that. We're using that money to design our facility. We've been able to get uh, $3 million for the, from the Federal Transit Administration to build the facility. So, so that's in the works already. There's funds that uh, have been programmed uh, for, to support that. Uh, the, of course, the park and ride, uh, we were able to get $9.5 million for that. Uh, with um, the um, mobility on demand Uber a type transit system, we have $1.9 million and 446,000 dollars matching to make that happen. Um, I have um, people who are dedicated to support um, you know these initiatives. Uh, on the other hand, um, with uh, the American Rescue uh, Funds, uh, we'll be able to bring in uh, the manpower uh, expertise to help us uh, uh, become autonomous and so forth. But we, uh, we do have, uh, sir, uh, the resources to make this happen and also uh, the fact that we have a, a plan moving forward to, to accomplish all of these. Uh, and you know, um, on a tangent here, the park and ride up at Dededu is the road to education phase one. Uh, and, and that can be the beginning of how our high school students from George Washington High School and Father Duedas Memorial High School can begin to take public transit instead of, you know, relying on the school buses. Uh, we also have uh, plans to build, uh, to put together a road to education phase two to, uh, to address the needs of our students um, and workers uh, going up towards um, the, the learning institutions for the South and the Central. So, so you know, um, and with the park and ride facility, I mean grants, provision of that grant is to uh, do an RFP for technical assistance. And the purpose of that is to put together an electrification plan for the Guam Regional Transit Authority and the island of Guam in uh, looking at vehicles that we need, for electric vehicles, the batteries that we need for those electric vehicles in view of the environmental conditions of Guam, plus charging stations, you know. Uh, so, um, we, uh, we, we, we do have, um, you know, the vision and, um, and, 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 and the plan, sir, to make this happen. And as a matter of fact, um, had we um, have uh, another individual to support my grant writer, 
you know, we had planned to submit another grant proposal, but we just don't have the time. But, you know, uh, with uh, the American Re Rescue Plan and be able to hire another person, uh, we're going to continue to compete for federal grants. And we're very confident that based on our experience in um, putting together competitive grants, that we can, we can, you know, compete with other transit agencies and, and be successful in our, on, on our grant applications. So, yeah, so what I'm hearing is that's a system-wide plan. And I, and, and I think you're, you know, I can see it laying out because, you know, you, you started with your building, started with understanding your routing, started with understanding your need for vehicles. Yeah. It's a, it's a systemic, yes, it's a system presentation right. that you're giving. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that. The reason why I wanted to ask my next question is your request under public transit fund, I'm, I'm assuming this is the collectibles that, that, that you're able to get through fees that you charge for transport? The, the public transit fund, from yeah. what I understand, is um, from the diesel uh, uh, tax, I believe, and the Guam Highway Fund is from the gas tax. Uh, but um, the um, bus fares that we um, get, sir, is um, under a non-appropriated fund. And that's not listed in this? No, sir, it's not on this. Yeah. Okay, and the reason why I was going there was I just have two more questions. I, I can see the vision of the build it and, and they will come and I, I really like the idea of your discussion on integration with public works and the, and the busing system for particularly our high school students. And I, I really think that you're, you're onto something there because now we're catching a public public arrangement mm -hmm. to where we can uh, you know, talk about cost because what I'm concerned about, Mr. Babalta, the vision is great and the federal funding looks very, very promising. It's sustainability that now becomes the question long term. And it sounds like you're, you're, you're there with some different pieces as well. You've got your integration with um, public works. So where I'm trying to go here is maybe you've discussed in your presentation that you didn't view a prior contract as being suitable and didn't perform for GRTA but is there from the direction of your board of directors and your vision is there still any thoughts of a public private partnership because there is going to be some discussion going forward depending on how large the system becomes that there is a, a government private edge here in terms of, you know, you talk about uh, government uh, Ubers to pick up our guests. I mean, there's a lot of folks out there right now that are, that's their, you know, they're relying on that for their job too on the private side. So I'm just trying to kind of break this down to, is there any thoughts from the board of directors and yourself to continue in the direction you're going, but also understand there, there may be opportunities for public private, um, partnerships? Uh, uh, sir, uh, that, that is a, a very good question again. Um, let me just say that um, as, as we continue to embark in this um, vision, you know, and, and our pursuit to make our transit system better in Guam, there, there has to be a continuous analysis in making sure that the cost for uh, running an operation with the private sector and the cost for running an operation with the public sector, you know, uh, is clearly and uh, um, transparent to make sure that, you know, we're spending people's money effectively. Um, but there's no doubt that uh, as, we, as Guam continues to um, uh, require um, more uh, transit operations, we, we, have to, we have to work with our private partners uh, uh, for example, our maintenance right now, you know, even if we build our maintenance facility, we can do uh, preventive maintenance, we can do minor maintenance, but when it comes to major maintenance, we're going to rely on, on some of our dealerships who's got more uh, capabilities in, you know, um, doing those major type work. Um, but, but of course, um, 
um, those areas that uh, we believe um, will work best with uh, GRTA, we'll do that. But those areas where we can partner with our, our, our uh, private sector, we're going to have to do that. Like, for example, when we build the park and ride facility, we're going to have a, a convenience uh, a center there, you know. Uh, uh, mom and pop uh, vendor can come in and sell, you know, uh, goodies and, and those kinds of things, you know, while the bus riders are, are waiting. Uh, Congressman San Nicolas included on a, on a bill in Congress to uh, hopefully award Guam $20 million. Our hope is that part of that $20 million, we're going to build a transfer station right there at the Hagatna Pool area. Uh, the uh, Hagatna Restoration Commission had reserved that area for a park and ride, and you know, but but we need a transfer station there, and uh, you know, again, a, 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 a convenience center will be there, and the other thing, the maintenance and upkeep of our charging stations, uh, we have to outsource that out. I, I really don't want to become uh, an employee employment agency, you know. Uh, for, for those that we need to make our transit system viable, of course we have to do that. But for other areas that require much more expertise, then we may have to go to the private sector and work with them on those things, yeah. And, and so, that's my concern, Mr. Rubato. Yeah. I think, you know, like I said, I, I'm, I'm not trying to throw a, <laughs> I understand, a wet sir. rag on the fire, right? I mean, I'm, mm. I, I'm really charged by what you're putting forward. Yeah. I think as, as the legislature and, and us who are going to be not myself, whatever, whoever the new senators eventually come in, the, the sustainability of the system going yeah. forward is something that yeah. for the government of Guam to subsidize and sustain, the need is there, the need is great, yeah. no question about it. Uh -huh. it's, the, it's the system that you build and the effectiveness of that and how much government subsidy is required outside of your non-appropriated. Like, just, give, just one example right now, of course, you know, COVID, let's just throw away 2020, right? What was your non-appropriated revenues in 2019? Yeah, well, you know, our, our NAF funds have dropped tremendously because of the uh, precautionary measures, you know. Uh, but again, um, as the economy recovers, uh, you know, we, um, we are going to, to need to provide a better transit system. Uh, you talk about sustainability, uh, you know, Public Law 30-5 allows us to manage public parking in Guam. DRTA is definitely not going to go out and open up its own parking business, you know, we're not going to do that. I think it's best for us to plan a parking um, public parking in Guam, but definitely, I think, in my own opinion, uh, the private sector can manage that for us, you know. Um, with regards to franchising public transportation in Guam, again, we can provide some leadership in, in that regard, but as far as managing that, um, I, I'm not sure whether we can handle that. I think we can maybe work with the private sector in that regard, you know. So there's... Um, there's a, a lot of room to, uh, to, to make sure that, you know, we allow our pri private sector people to take advantage of some of uh, GRTA's uh, services, yeah. But, uh, and the governor of Guam has made it clear to the cabinet members that as we move ahead with this uh, American Rescue Plan and, and, and get those funds, that we need to be mindful of making sure that we're going to be able to sustain what we've uh, purchased or what we've hired, you know, to uh, ensure that we continue to uh, provide the, the service that's needed with the, the manpower that we hired. Yeah. So, so maybe this uh, is more appropriate for uh, a round table going forward, because I think it's going to be important for the legislature. Your, your, your dreams and your plans are outstanding. I, like I said, I want to be clear that I understand where you're going. I just believe that it's going to be a responsible move for the legislature to continue on this journey because I even looked at your board of directors. I'm not sure. I may have saw one private sector person there. 
um, I, I would like to see more of that participation so that we can continue to make sure that we're operating, you know, in tandem. Yeah. Um, you know, as you know, Mr. Babata, many transportation companies and many, you know, individuals have invested, you know, large sums of money in, in, in trying to provide a service as well. And so um, we want to make sure, at least from my perspective, I like to make sure that government and private is working in tandem wherever it can uh, to maximize, you know, efficiencies, um, to, to make sure that, uh, you know, the systems are, have an equilibrium. Um, but I, I think that, you know, nobody's going to argue with, and that's why the legislature even, you know, move forward to, to, to try to work with you and give you those resources uh, even under uh, the American Rescue Plan is because we see that vision as well. I just, you know, I know you'll be open to it. I'm going to ask the chairman after the budget session to maybe schedule a couple of roundtables with you so we can watch this evolution going forward and have other partners at the table as well. Yes, Senator Duenas, um, uh, I mean, you brought up some very good points and, and, and really that's something that, uh, I mean, on my concluding statement of my testimony, uh, there's no doubt that uh, without the support of this body of government, uh, GRT is not going to be able to make things happen on its own or with the administration. We have to work together. This is, uh, I mean, you know, I, in the last few years, I had an opportunity to work in Europe. I worked in Germany f uh, from 2009 to 2012. And from there, I went to, to I, I lived in Japan. Um, I lived in Korea, you know, and, and public transportation. And even in the United States, I mean, I have a bus pass here that I got from Honolulu because I wrote the bus because it, it was much better for me to ride the bus than to, to go out and rent a car, you know. So, so there's a big need for, uh, for yeah, transit, and, and there's no doubt that um, we need the support of the, the legislature. I think you're the right guy for the job, and like I said, I know my chairman will be uh, more than willing uh, to, to, to really uh, work with you going forward, because I think this is, the people of Guam are going to want to watch this unfold, and, and uh, I think you're doing a great job, Mr. Bobata. So, yeah. Mr. Chairman, with that, Mr. Mossy, that that's really uh, the extent of my question this morning. Uh, thank you, Sandrinus, and I, and I like the idea of uh, a public-private partnership because when they're dealing with a lot of the GSA and supply requirements, uh, that's how private companies work, okay? That's number one. Number two, we don't want the government of Guam to grow any bigger than it needs to. Yeah. We're not in competition with the private industry. We're supposed to work together as one. That being said, Senator Brown, do you have any comments or questions for the panel? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I certainly appreciate your comments because I'm, I'm pretty much along the same lines with you. Uh, you know, I, I appreciate your vision, Mr. Babalta. I think to be able to come into an agency and, and want to take it to the next level, I think that's everything everyone who's run a department aspires to and wanting to see how you can improve. Uh, the Guam Managed Transit Authority for so many years has just been plagued with inefficiencies. Um, you know, this is not a new formula. It's not something we need to reinvent new for Guam. I mean, as you've relayed, as others have, of those of us that have been to other jurisdictions and lived in other locations, uh, you know, the bus system works effectively in many other jurisdictions. In Guam, for whatever reason, it continues to have been an issue. Um, and that's what I'm focused on. I mean, you're, you're talking about getting into areas perhaps of where, where um, your department can expand into other areas to include, you know, transporting people almost an Uber style process. And I, I do have some concerns about that because I don't, I agree. I, I don't want to see the government grow in areas that I don't believe it needs to grow. Uh, so the whole idea of, of uh, classifying and expanding mass transit and integrating it further into the government of Guam is probably something I'm not going to be an advocate for. Primarily because I think that issue of that type of service can be provided by the private sector and can be provided effectively by the private sector. Uh, we've had, you know, taxi drivers that have been out of business pretty much since the beginning of this pandemic because there's no tourists to drive and for many of them that, that is their living. Uh, so those are people certainly as our economy rebuilds and our tourism industry rebuilds that I, I would like to see get back to business and, and be able to go out and make a living and provide for their families. Uh, so I do have reservations about us expanding into areas we don't need to. And then also, you know, the, the private process now, it's our, our version of uh, 
Uber here on Guam where private uh, sector is pursuing and you know where people can get on their app and request transportation here and there. I'd rather see those things in the hands of the private sector. I think they've been able to do it effectively. To me, I, I've never understood why mass transit has had such difficulty because you know the government of Guam does a major operation almost every single school day. You know, it moves over 30,000 plus children and yes, every now and then there's a mishap, but most days it executes that process uh, without any problem. You know, we, we, we go from point A to point B, from one bus stop to the other. We have set routes, a number of routes every day. Bus drivers that drive several routes to take care of the elementary, middle, and high school students. So again, I, I've, I've never understood the history as to why it's been so complicated for mass transit to do it. Of course, that's in the past. Moving forward, you know, I, I don't disagree with you wanting to get these, uh, these hub locations. I know we were here not too long ago about talking about the piece of property up in Dedido so that you could be able to have a location for, for your buses and, and a transit area. And I'm very supportive of that. I think within, we stay within our jurisdiction. I, I would be very supportive of, of mass transit. I just want to see that where we, the locations and the routes that we can, we can provide consistent, reliable transportation. That's what I want to see. Eventually, as time goes on and we're able to multiply that and we can go to other areas of the island and, and, and go to more locations that can literally be, you know, people's bus station that's near their front door, wonderful. But I want to make sure moving towards that that we have consistency and delivery of service. I see from your, your presentation here in, in the documents that you're, you're able now to track the location of your buses, the location of your drivers. Do you have tracking systems? How is that working? Uh, so that you can you collectively from from your headquarters uh, keep track of your operations I, I thank you for asking that question and that's really what i wanted to conclude with is to invite you know the senators to go up and take a look at even though we're in a temporary facility mm -hmm. where it, it's happening now where if i go into the transit management center and find out how is uh, blue two the route that picks up riders from Agat, PD, Ascend, mm -hmm. you know, and so forth. I can, I, can be, I, I can find out whether that bus is running on time. Mm -hmm. I can find out if that bus is uh, um, speeding or not. Mm -hmm. I can find out how many riders are in that bus. Sure. Uh, I can find out, um, you know, data on the number of riders that we, um, we transport daily. It's, it's working very well, ma'am. Uh, it's no more uh, having a, a paper uh, manifest to identify who's on the bus. We have a tablet that's on the bus, mm -hmm. and with that tablet through GPS, the, the driver will be able to communicate with our dispatcher to uh, ensure that, you know, uh, the transit operations is moving right along. So it's working, it's working very well. It's a new system. We're trying to maximize the usage of the system, and... Um, uh, I, I really, it, it's been a long time waiting, mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's I, I ask, you know, any of the senators who are wanting to come up and take a look at this system, just let me know and we'll arrange for uh, a briefing to make sure that you have a pretty good idea of uh, how the system operates. But, you know, going back to, to the Uber type transit operations, uh, I mean, it's a feasibility study. That, uh, that's being watched by the Federal Transit Administration. And of course, you know, President Biden is a very strong advocate of public, private public partnership. And, and uh, you know, w we are going to do the study. The results of the study will have to be communicated up to the Federal Transit Administration because the study is going to be used to share with other transit agencies in the United States. And definitely, you know, the leadership of Guam, uh, bearing in mind the results of the study, can say, hey, you know, can we handle all of Guam with regards to a mobility on demand transit operations? Maybe part of that can be, you know, uh, passed out to the private sector. But Senator Brown, I, I'm a firm believer of making sure that, um, you know, whatever we can do with the private sector, I think there's a big need to, uh, to uh, make them part of the economic growth of Guam. 
Well, and I'm sure for the private sector, I mean, they're, they're who sustains our economy. Uh, that's the way in those areas, and, and certain operations of the government, I would have reservations about this. Yeah. I would have concerns about incorporating this in the government. I mean, you mentioned, are you looking at bringing on 60 plus drivers, classifying them? I mean, how do you intend to continue to sustain and pay for that? That's going to continue to be a, a burden on the general fund. Well, I mean, you're looking at revenue here, what, $175,000 with regards to um, just fees that are collected yeah. for the bus drivers? I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't add up. I mean, you're looking at 2.6, yeah. almost 2.7 from, from funds that you're receiving from the highway fund and from what, this uh, public transit fund? I mean, yeah. I mean, we're pretty much having, obviously, the reality is, as many jurisdictions, they but, subsidize but, public transportation. Yeah. but. Uh, to look and wanting to say that, oh, in order to have dedicated workers, we need to classify them. I, I, you know, I, I, I don't see that as a rationale in this particular area of wanting to continue to expand the government footprint at a time when she'd be looking at how do we grow our economy. I don't think we need to dictate uh, if their private interest is already out there in transportation that we need to intercede on that. That's happening on its own. I'm sure that when the tourism industry uh, gets back in operation, we're going to see the private drivers out there moving the tourists and the taxi drivers and the Uber drivers, our version of it here, uh, in operation without the government having to interject itself into that process. Uh, if there's a profit to be made and there's a service that's needed, I think the dynamics of the system itself addresses that. What I want us to focus on with mass transit is taking care of those routes that that there is a need to do it where we can effectively and reliably provide that service and certainly as time expands as I mentioned and resources expand yeah. I'll be able to cover the entire island uh, and do that consistently I think once that's that's demonstrated uh, then that's as far as I would like to see the government involved in the transportation yeah. process okay. you brought one other point about uh, you know this is a, a vehicle under which children can also now instead of going through the public busing process be able to use this as a form of transportation to and from school. Um, I've thought a lot about this, and this is something I would want to get feedback from parents here on Guam, because I, I do have reservation, Mr. Babauta, about having children, particularly young children, on a bus with individuals of all ages. I personally, as a mother, would have a concern about that. I think a lot of parents would. We have enough incidences here on Guam where our children are being abused and misused here in this community. And I do not want to provide an opportunity uh, for predators of people of that nature that can be on a public school, on a public transit system uh, that could uh, unfortunately in any way harm children. It's bad enough we worry about it now with the current system that we have where our children are segregated in their public school bus. Um, but I, I, I have a little more comfort with that than I do having children getting on the public transit, especially if they're unaccompanied. If they're with their parent then, or their legal guardian and they're underage, I don't have a problem with that. But I, I would have concern for myself, would I put my child on a public, you know, even if they were a teenager, probably not. I would not want to see them unattended. Uh, I think that leaves too much opportunity, especially with what is already going on in our community. Um, so I would, I would think that through, and I would want to ask parents on Guam who do have their children ride their public school system, who also you know, parents also have their kids in the private school use the public school system to transport their children. It works. Unlike ma the history of mass transit on Guam, even with some of its minor problems along the way, the system does work. So I, I just want to bring that to your awareness and your attention because uh, I think parents need to have a say in whether this is something. I, I would be out of my mind wondering, you know, did my child get safely to school, especially where they're mixed with adults that are not their, not their guardian and not their parent. Uh, so, so just be mindful of that because it sounds great, but uh, you know the other side of the coin. I mean, I'm going to always want to be on the side of caution uh, because you know the reality is. I mean, it, it might be behind the closed doors or whatever the case on Guam, but the the amount of abuse on children on this community is is just disgusting. It's almost inexcusable. So I certainly don't want to provide an opportunity where children are not in a safe environment. And I'm not saying that uh, just because they're in a bus, it's not safe. But the possibility, the probability. Because you, you can't, you don't know, distinguish who's getting on and off your bus. Uh, but it's just something that really needs to be looked at. Yeah, maybe it happens in other jurisdictions, but I'm not in other jurisdictions. I'm here on Guam. And I just want to ensure that, that, you know, we have some comfort level that when our children are going to school, that they're getting there safely and not mixing with, with other individuals that are unknown to these children that, that could be exposing them to, to any type of harm. So I just think we need to look at that issue a little more cautiously. 
uh, with regards to that. And I, I'm strangely enough, even though people have always said, oh, let's privatize the, the school bus drivers, I'm like, you know, I, I appreciate the school bus drivers. There's a lot of good, hardworking, responsible drivers that do their job every day. Um, and I, I'm not necessarily in the business of wanting to put them out of, out of the job that they do have. But I do have reservations on, on mass transit side of expanding that and classifying and continue to grow the government. I'd rather you oversee the contract and have private sector actually run the bus, you know, have the employees and run the, the mass transit system with, with the over, overlay of Matt, your, your office overseeing that rather than to continue to grow the government. So I just want to bring up those concerns. I mean, I think we've, each of us probably have a different perspective, but I think some of us have, have relayed similar areas of concern that we have as policymakers, and I'm open. I certainly look forward to when we do have these uh, roundtable discussions so that we can further, further look at it. I appreciate your vision. I really do. I wish I had more directors coming in and telling me the big picture that may be beyond their time. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't fault you for that in any way, but I just, I just put these areas of concern that from my perspective, I think we need to, to look a little cautiously about uh, and be aware of moving forward. With that, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much, and thank you, Ms. Rebelta, for providing your, your presentation this morning. Thank you. And, and thank you, Senator Brown, and I, and I concur with you. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't support the middle schools and below going into the mass transit without being uh, uh, escorted, taken care of. I, I'd, I'd be worried. I would not be comfortable. I wouldn't support it at all. We'd have to see a transition period. But like I mentioned earlier, public-private partnership, exactly what she mentioned, we can make this thing work. We can make it sound. Because when, when they're moving uh, folks from the airport to the hotels, it shouldn't have been public works. It should have been a private company moving this. That's the business. We're not in competition with the private companies, and we need to practice that more often. Senator Blas, do you have any comments or questions for the panel? Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good morning, Mr. Walter, ma'am. How are you doing today? And thank you for your, for your presentation. I was listening very intently. Although, uh, you know, a question that was, that was broached earlier by um, Senator Duenas, he had asked, um, what were your non-appropriate funds? How much, how much did GRT make um, in 2019 and in 2020? Sir, um, I don't have any concrete information in that regard, but what I can do is I can um, uh, actually, based on what we have, we're, we're uh, I, I looked at that, we're uh, making about $5,000 um, a week in some regards, um, but Again, um, you know, the fair structure was put together a few years ago. So there may be a need to look at that. Uh, on the other hand, um, one thing that, um, and I appreciate that question, because bus fares are always uh, a, a very important part in the resources that we need. Uh, the big advantage of uh, the transit system uh, from what I've uh, learned is that it's never a money-making uh, entity. On the other hand, um, the people that we transport to work, the people that we transport to school, you know, they end up getting jobs and, and they pay taxes and um, contribute to the tax, tax base of, you know, the, the local government. Uh, so we may not be making a whole lot of uh, income with regards to bus fares, but... Um, the, the fact that when we provide transportation for, for the workers um, and the students who soon will become workers, you know, uh, will be uh, the dividends that the government will receive. But with regards to your question, sir, um, uh, what we'll do is we'll give you some concrete information in that regard and we'll pass it on to you. Thank you. And that's, you know, I, I believe that, is, that information is key so that we can help to determine, okay? I recognize it's not appropriated funds, and you can probably use it. But you know, at these, at these dire times that we have physically, we got to find every which way to be able to squeeze, you know, a nickel from two pennies. Um, and if it is necessary to find out, okay, just how much are you making there, so that we, you know, let's be honest. If we need to cut, we know we can where you know where it can be sustainable. But along those lines, I you know, I hope that in your uh, in, 
in your vision of where you want to go with mass transit, that, that vision also includes basically what a cost-benefit analysis is going to be, a return of investment, if you will. I, too, have a, you know, I'm a little uneasy about the government taking over in places where the private sector can provide. Okay? But I also recognize, too, that there's value in private-public partnerships and be able to do this. But, you know, if I was even a, a, a you know, private sector uh, company that was, a, that was a, approached by you um, and not knowing what your finances are, what your, what your projections will be, uh, it would be very difficult to be able to convince a private pu sector partner to be able to join with you, much less, you know, with, with this body. Uh, and whether or not what we are going to appropriate is just going to something that's going to be spent, but there's no return on the investment on it. Okay, so I would appreciate you know that that information. That would be very very interesting. Again, like as well, I'm sure that you have already started in, on, like you said, you started on your plans to be able to grow. Well, what does that growth mean? What is what, what does that mean with regards to anticipated revenues that you can that you can earn? What does that mean if you if you decide to put together um, your Uber concept? You know, how much more is that going to bring in for GRTA? Okay, uh, you know, we, I want to be able to, I'd like to be able to help you build, a, 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 you know, a, an agency or, or um, a system that can become self-sustaining. All right, now, you know, maybe it's pie, pie in the sky dream, but you know what, at least it's somewhere to start, somewhere to go. Okay, so along those lines, um, you know, also, a discussion that you had earlier was, was, was basically um, looking at, you know, sharing routes, not only with private sector, but with uh, school buses and stuff. Have you had a discussion with DPW ever on, on you, you said, you know, you're, you're, you, you, you don't have bus drivers, but DPW has a lot. But have you so ever had a discussion with DPW on, on how the two, you and DPW, bus transportation can, can work together? Uh, Senator Blas, uh, Vince Irola and I have sat down and spoken about this, you know. And, and the other thing that um, I um, have done with regard to transit is that I've, I've gone out and done my own research. And the Federal Transit Administration allows us to use um, federal funds uh, to um, integrate the transportation of students and uh, people with disabilities, you know, into our transit operations. And, and like I said, you know, the, the road to education phase one that's going to begin up at Derrida with a park and ride, that's going to allow high school students to GW and Father Duenas Memorial High School to, to use that, you know, bus in the event that their parents uh, don't have a way to bring them to school or whatever, but it's an option for them to take. And, you know, um, safety is the number one priority in any um, transit operations. And um, with uh, uh, the type of technology that we can incorporate into our transit uh, system, we enable us to make sure that safety is always uh, a, a top priority. Uh, so... Um, We've, we've talked about that, definitely, about beginning to take over. And, and with this Road to Education Phase 1, I think that will be an opportunity for us to take a look at the viability of at least transporting high school students. Um, with regards to bus drivers, um, they um, have their own challenges in keeping and hiring bus drivers for school bus operations. Uh, so, but, but we've talked about, you know, the fact of in the coming future that perhaps maybe it's something that DPW and GRTA can work together as a team to begin to transition some of um, uh, school bus transportation to GRTA. And it's allowed by the Federal Transit Administration. But going back to, um, to um, you know, public-private public partnership, um, a couple of reasons why I was able to convince the governor 
to, uh, to take over power transit and fix route. Number one, uh, the service. Um, the service a couple years ago and the service now are very different. I mean, right at this legislative hall, uh, there's oversight and after oversight about the problems that need to be addressed. Now, um, you know, we've been doing our best to make sure that we address the needs of our paratransit riders. The other is when, when um, fixed route and, and paratransit were being contracted out, the cost for that was approximately $2.4 million. Now with us taking over paratransit and fixed route, it's $1.9 million. We, uh, we uh, have the ability to lead and manage our own resources. When we contract out, we can only lead and manage those that are within the confines of the contract. So, uh, but moving forward, again, there's, there's always a, a need to continue to do analysis to make sure that the service is being provided, to make sure that, that there's cost-benefit analysis that's being done to determine that, you know, the taxpayers of Guam are, are being given the type of service that they, uh, that they deserve. Uh, so those are, are really definitely um, a big item on my, uh, on my mindset, sir. I, uh, I've never worked, let me just say that I've never worked for government of Guam until now, two years. So, you know, my, my, my mindset uh, is, is to maximize resources to the best of my ability. Okay. Yeah. So, what was your, along those lines then, what was your personal strength in 2019? In what? Your personal strength. How many people did you have employed at GRT or GRTA in 2019? In 2019? Yes. Uh, we came on board with seven employees, sir. Seven employees? Seven employees. How many well, How many? But, but then again, we weren't managing, okay. it was all contracted out, you know, I show up at 4 o'clock in the morning at the contractor's side and there's no leadership and management. We were getting complaints after complaints and then, you know, we took over. Okay, and what was your, fl what was your fleet count then when you first came in? The fleet count? Your fleet count. Seven buses and vans Se were operational. Seven, sorry? Seven buses and vans. Okay. And we were contracting out additional buses and vans. How many contract? How many buses were you contracting out? Uh, it depends on the need of. Uh, we normally need um, seven, about 15 buses a day. So we, at, 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 on some occasions, we had to contract whatever is needed to um, to to provide transit operations. Now. We have 18 buses and vans. Okay, so you have 18 buses and vans now. Right, so we're not contracting any more of a uh, $74 an hour van. How many I employees mean, do you have now? Right now, sir, uh, with, with about um, $500,000 less, we have um, 40, bus driver, 40 bus drivers, schedulers, dispatchers, maintenance people, and 29 full-time employees. So we have a total of about 60... 60, uh, 69 people. 69? Yes, and that's, sir. that's running a fleet 24-7? Pardon me? Are you running your fleet 24-7? No. What, 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 what? 16 hours a day, sir. 16 hours a day. So Correct. that's basically two shifts. Right. So two shifts with uh, 16 buses. No, not 16 buses. How many buses do you run a day? We run um, 7 and 8, 50. Yeah, well, 16. 15, 16 buses. 16 yeah. buses, right? Yeah, 16, yeah, yeah, yeah. 16 buses a day. Mm -hmm. 32, six, so 16 six, times six, 2. No, no, so 16 buses a day, uh -huh. 6 days a week, right. 16 hours a day. Yeah, but then yeah. You, you run two shifts, right? Right, but we only have enough fleet for both, both a.m. and p.m. So that's why we're buying more buses, so that we'll be able to... Um, to um, have more flexibility with our bus operations. Okay, well, you know, I, I, I really want to go further into this, but what's key is, uh, and missing piece of information was, you know, how much have you been making and how much do you anticipate to make? And where's the money going? The money's going... How, how are you using the money? You're not appropriated fund. Pardon me? 
Well, how are you using the money? You know, when you get the bus fare, it's 50, right? We, we use the money, sir, for yeah. um, uh, essentials that we need. Well, for you know, I'd like to know how, what, what those essentials are so that we can help to anticipate what your, what your well, costs are going to be. Well, well, sometimes we need them for uh, not items that are not available at GSA. I'm sorry, I couldn't as, hear you. Such as oil, uh, toilet tissue, uh, wipes for our riders, um, you know. Uh, Mr. 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 Bobalta, you have a staff of you, Mrs. Cruz. I'm, I'm looking at the name. Mrs. Cruz, right? Are, are you the... Uh, the ASO, the administrative officer or finance person there? Um, yes, uh, acting admin officer. A big pardon? Acting admin officer. No, you're the admin officer. Okay. Can you hear me? I, I'm trying to understand. What is your position? She, uh, she's my acting services. Um, acting administrative, administrative officer. officer. Okay. Ma'am, state your name completely. And maybe you can answer the question Senator Bloss is asking because this sure. whispering back and forth doesn't make sense. So Not when you can answer it and save Mr. Babalta from trying to hear you and we can move along. Okay. okay. Thank name, you. <laughs> my name is Jennifer Badar Cruz. I'm the acting administrative officer for GRTA. Okay, so I'm going back to how the non appropriated funds are used. Um, I would appreciate if, and this will help in the discussions, okay? And I, you know, and, and thanks. You know, Mr. Babata, I don't mean to be confrontational or everything. I just, I've got to find ways to be able to continue to fund, you know, help this, the, the legislature's responsibilities, not just fund GRTA, but the other agencies. Okay? And, and really, if, 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 if uh, we, w we need to be able to tap into your non appropriated funds so that you can take, knock off some of the things you were going to use with the general fund, that would help, that would help us tremendously. But at the same time, is, is, you know, are we building an agency just to keep to subsidize? You know, you said that you had, you were having, or you had discussions with DPW. I would encourage you to continue to have the discussions with DPW in this. Because, you know, one of the things, and it was brought up earlier, I think it would have been more, I guess, acceptable, if you will, or, 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 you know, not as ominous if it was a GRTA bus that was taking passengers from the airport to the hospital as opposed to being, okay, in a school bus, okay? I mean, some of those, this is, it's just those little things that we, we, we can assist, we can help each other out, because you know what, I bet you to say, the money that they used to use those DPW buses could have been the same money they could be used to use GRTA buses. Okay, so it's, it's little things like this, you know, that, that, that it does, it, unfortunately, because of our economic condition today, we have to sometimes, it, it's, also, it's almost like nitpicking, but it's nitpicking so that we can stay afloat. But also, however, as well with this is, you've got a vision, um, and, and really for, for me, it's enlightening because, you know, GRTA has been this, uh, this puzzle that we couldn't solve for the longest time, okay? And, and you seem to have a vision for that. How can we not make sure, first off, it's funded properly, it's, you know, it, and if, we, it's, if it's subsidized, it's not a matter of just throwing money in there and no, getting no return on investment, okay? I appreciate and I understand that you got money, federal grant, federal funding and everything. Um, but that's not going to last. At one point in time, this federal funding, which is why I'm very concerned a lot of times when agencies go out and get federal funding, is that they say, oh, it's free for a number of years, but then pretty soon there's a cost share. And then that cost share becomes a responsibility to this government. And this is a cost share that we never anticipated, that we, we, did, we, we didn't anticipate. Oh, but along those lines, another question that just came to my mind is, how much of our, RRP, our, our ARP funding have you requested for, for regional uh, transit? I am um, working with the governor and the finance team in that regard. Um, uh, we've 
seeing uh, the proposal that was put forth by the speaker, and that's, um, that's um, uh, what we have right now. But on the other hand, um, again, I'm working with the governor of Guam and the finance team to arrive at a concrete amount. But how much? I'm Pardon sure me? you walked into the room with a with a figure. What was that figure? Um, I've uh, requested uh, approximately eight and a half million dollars. Eight and a half million dollars. Okay. Well, you know, that also would be be helpful is that you know from that eight and a, eight and a half million dollar request, what was it for? I, I don't expect it. You know, is is it is is when you come back with a how your breakdown in your non appropriate funds is made. That's something that you can answer then. Sure. Sure. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Thank you very much. I truly really appreciate it. You're thank welcome. you, Mr. Uh, th thank you, Senator Blas. And, uh, and for my colleagues. To, uh, sir, can I just make a comment with uh, uh, okay. Senator Blas? Senator Blas, yeah, we, um, you know, we're working well with uh, Vince uh, Ariola. As a matter of fact, um, uh, they're using one of our um, Arbuck uh, 17 passenger bus to transport uh, riders from the airport to the hospital to the quarantine stations, you know, um, uh, and, and we help out with using some of uh, their resources to do some minor maintenance and so forth. Yeah, so, yeah, there's, there's a good working relationship between uh, me and Vince, and, and definitely uh, we're looking ahead. We're looking ahead to, to provide the people of Guam with uh, much better service. And I think, just so you know, a lot of my questions were basically hints as to some suggestions, okay? Uh -huh. so I, a lot of the questions that I asked with regards to that conversation, the discussion, are more so hints, you know, of what else can be done. Your A so kind of figures what I'm going. Thank you, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Blas and Mr. Bata. My colleagues and uh, Mr. Bata and your staff, you submitted a uh, budget document you're aware of this, right? Okay. Yes, sir. It came yes, from sir. you. Some of the questions that were asked, put for both, I said, be fun to talk to you, you know? If you want to know how much you know how much you made on bus fares, it's in your document. 160,000. In the next document, it tells you in 2021, 165. In 2022, you hope to make 175,000. Take advantage of your document. Because some of your answers are there, you provided it. I, I don't want you to just look at your talking points. Take advantage of both, please. I understand. Because I, I can read it, and uh, the only thing, I'll be puzzled, and I'll be working with your, your oversight chair, Senator Beadle. We need to come to terms of what we need to do. And exactly what some of the colleagues asked, maybe we'll do a round table. Find out how we can help you, and how we can get everybody else involved in making the Guam Mass, Guam Regional Transit Authority the most efficient, the most reliable means of getting our people of Guam around the island. Because you, you could end up taking over the bus, bus operation of public works. But it's got to work. It's got to make sense. That being said, uh, this will conclude the committee, um, the budget hearing on Guam Regional Transport, Transit Authority. Uh, the committee will continue to receive testimony. Please address your written testimony to the Committee on General Government Operation Appropriation and housing and submit it via email to Senator Joe S. Augustine at gmail.com or to my office located on Rancare Building, second floor, suite 3, 761 Marine Corps Drive, Timoni, Guam. Sizu Smasi for attendance and participating in today's hearing. And for those at home, thank you for watching. And thank you, Senator um, Sal Babata, Executive Director, and Ms. Cruz for participating today. The budget hearing on Bill 55 36 COR relative to the Guam Regional Transit Authority. It's now adjourned. It is now 10.51. Thank you, and please be safe.